So proponents of innate linguistic knowledge, innate knowledge in general, uh, are pretty clear that children need some sort of head start, right? And why do they think this? And the idea is that, oh, it's because the input that children are exposed to is to, quote unquote, impoverished for children to figure out the right language rules without some kind of help, right? And so this issue of the input being too impoverished, of it being not enough on its own, right? Uh, to have children figure out the right rules for their language. This is sometimes called poverty of the stimulus. The input is too impoverished, so that's the poverty part, and stimulus refers to input. So poverty of the stimulus is impoverished input. And the idea again is that children need something else besides just the data out there and the input to help them decide what the right rules are. And so you might say, okay, what does that mean exactly? Okay, so if we think about what the child is doing during language, and they're extracting patterns. They're making generalizations from the surrounding data, mostly just by hearing examples of what's allowed, right? You sort of generalize from what you hear. So what's so hard about that? Well, there are often many ways to generalize beyond the input, and most of them aren't right, right? So let's just take a really simple example in the realm of vocabulary acquisition. So here's a child register word, birdie. We as adults hopefully know what a birdie is, but a child doesn't. They have to learn, right, what a birdie is if they're an English-speaking child. And so someone might say, look, what a pretty birdie, and point out this very nice bird. Look, a birdie, and point out this very nice bird. Look at that birdie, point out that very nice bird. And so let's say that, you know, that's the data that you get, right? How do you going to generalize beyond the input if this is your input? Well might look at this and say, hmm, well, you know what they all have in common is they're blue things. So birdie must mean anything that's blue, which means I think these things are also birdies. They are not birdies, right? So, okay, that's wrong. Uh, here's another hypothesis. They're things that sit on branches or pieces of wood. So you're like, great, anything that sits on a piece of wood or a tree branch is a birdie. So that's a birdie and that's a birdie. These are also not birdies, of course. Right, but you know, again, the point is that these hypotheses, blue things, things that sit on branches, probably many others that you could come up with from this set, are all true, and they're not right for what bird actually refers to what birdie should mean, right? So what the right hypothesis is, is whatever cluster of concepts goes together to make all of these things recognizable as birdies, and those other things from before not, right? That's what we mean by there are many ways to generalize beyond the input, and usually only one of them is right, and it's often not an easy one or an, or an obvious one. So this is called an induction problem, right? Where the input, there's not enough of it on its own to specify what the right rules are. That's an induction problem. We have to solve it by induction. So these kind of induction problems are everywhere in cognitive development including language acquisition. So language acquisition is really about solving a lot of induction problems correctly for years on end, right? It's actually a pretty hard task. And so the proposal, again, just to revisit this, is that the input is gonna to be too impoverished, that's poverty of the stimulus, for children to converge on the right language rules without it. Language acquisition is about solving a lot of these induction problems caused by poverty of the stimulus. And so because the data on their own are not enough, children need something else besides just the data in the input to help them decide what the right rules are. They need that boost, that head start, that innate knowledge, maybe it's linguistic.